modern day levitator. Southern Florida, this guy called Ed Leeds Conlon in the 20s bought, built this amazing place called Coral Castle. This is still a mystery to a lot of people, or they don't know about it. And he single-handedly put these giant blocks on top of each other, carved them, sculpted them, shaped them on his own. The interesting thing is when, when they used to bring these, these uh, the trucks used to deliver these rocks, he would, he would uh, offload them single-handedly. And nobody knew how he did it. He always made the guy stand around the corner or something like that, until one day two young schoolboys saw him offloading these giant coral blocks. And they came home very excited saying, hey, mommy, mommy, we saw the guy. And uh, they asked, how did he do it? And the kid said, well, he did it with ice cream cones in his hands, two ice cream cones. And the parents imagined, ah, naughty children, what are you talking about? You're trying to force us into buying you ice cream for dinner, right? Well, that's not true. When I heard that, I got extremely excited because that is consistent with what I've been finding in Southern Africa. Ice cream cones, cone-shaped tools. And that's why I call it the ice cream cone phenomenon. <laughs> and this has become a very important part of trying to unravel the ancient mystery, how they did this stuff. They used sound, they levitated stuff, but how did they do it? And I find many of these cone-shaped tools scattered all over Southern Africa, among the ruins, wherever you go. I was up the mountain two weeks ago, again, walking through areas that I've never been before. Remember, at this stage, I'm the only guy researching this, the whole of Southern Africa. It's like I'm the only guy researching Egypt. That's the equivalent of that. There's one guy in all of Egypt let loose to do, you know, try and get some sanity out of this. And uh, so I feel a little lonely, so come help. <laughs> so the, the, just to show you that these ice cream cone, cone-shaped tools are everywhere. They, there are thousands of them. I've just collected a few because after a while you get bored. You know, say, oh, there's another one over there. And uh, then you get to, these, to the Rosicrucian Museum in the United States, and guess what I find? These cone-shaped tools on display with Sumerian writing on it, uh, Sumerian cuneiform writing on it, commemorating the building of the temples in Sumer. They were then stored in the walls and hidden in secret chambers in the walls that were re re retrieved from the secret chambers in the walls. Now they're on display in the United States. Cone-shaped tools commemorating the building of the temples in Sumer. Ha, huh, the plot thickens, doesn't it? Just to show you, what? there's a little. The most remarkable artifacts that I've collected, um, this particular stone in my hand here, this beautiful Stone Age club, it looks like something out of Flintstones. Uh, and to, I'm going to show you how they ring like bells. Um, because I can't carry these with me all over the world. So a quick demonstration how these stones ring like bells. I just discovered that in geological terms these stones, this particular stone, the Hornfels in South Africa, is also known as ring stone for that very specific reason. And to ring these I'm going to use my brand new tool that I just collected about a, month, a week ago. This phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal artifact. Um, and I'm going to use this to ring these stones. This looks, we always joked when I found this, that this looks like a, a Stone Age guitar. And it's pretty much like that, you know. And uh, I'm going to show you that it is very closely related to a musical instrument in ancient times for very specific reasons. Now you might think that the stone shape is just accidental and that it broke off or something, you'd be mistaken because I've collected probably about four or five stones that are very, very similar in shape very similar um, carving structure, this broad base here and then down to a narrow tip and somebody removed this particular piece of the stone over there for specific reasons as you will hear which I'll ring a little bit more uh, they ring like bells but um, it's also important to note that you cannot carve or chip the stone it will splinter and fragment and it will not be chipped or carved Okay, so these, these shapes that we see here must have been molded in some way and molded for specific acoustic properties. And this is why. You've got to hold it a very specific way to make as little contact as possible to get it to ring and resonate at its optimum. Now remember it's also covered in patina, the skin of the rock, this brown reddish color that covers the rock that is no longer the original black or charcoal color, the original color of the um, the metamorphosized quartzite that's underneath. And that's how it rings. Ah. 
I can actually feel my fingers underneath are deadening the ringing because I'm holding it and it's deadening some of the effect. There we go. That's better. That's what you want. You realize that this thing really rings like a bell and it reverberates for quite a long time. Alright, and now to show you that this is not the only one, here's the other one. The Stone Age Club. And I drove over this myself a few times, driving up the mountain uh, of the forest road, and eventually I stopped and picked it up because I realized this is one of the most remarkable tools that you will ever find, and thank God I did. And it is very heavy. I'm out of breath because I'm holding my breath not to make a noise and this thing weighs probably about 15 kilos so and there you go demonstration how these stones ring like bells and they were used in all kinds of ways and fashions just like the ankh to create specific vibrational frequencies and specific notes to use as a form and a source of energy. So, Caesar technology was only discovered in the 17th June 2009. This was reported on in some of the scientific journals, talking about sound as being used as laser beams, not light, sound. And they think it's very exciting because it's got great applications in the military, obviously. And this is where the sacred stones come in, because I believe. These are not only energy devices like toruses, toroid energy generating fields because of the special stone that they're made of, but they're also frequency converters. One frequency in, another frequency out. And I believe that these pointy stones, like Ed Lead Skullnan, was reported to move the giant blocks with two ice cream cones in his hands. Well, you hold those two in your hands, it'll look like you're holding ice cream cones in your hands. And at the point where they cross, beaming high frequency sound waves they will create levitation the higher the frequency the higher the power and the energy so you can lift huge things up and move it around as you want ice cream cones in your hands boy those two schoolboys made my day <laughs> there you go what i find interesting is that average three centimeters which equates to 10 gigahertz so when we reverse engineer this i'm looking for laboratories that work on on laser technology we can do some remarkable experiments people We'll change the world. We'll use these stones and we're going to discover new energies. And we can, any volunteers, we can put you in front there, set it up, and see what happens if we, if we phase you out or if you're still there. <laughs> 10 gigahertz.